As you enter the cavern, you hear loud footsteps behind you, crunching heavily on the rocky floor. You crouch down beside the entrance in a small alcove. The steps get louder, and you see a great ogre enter the cavern. He stands over two meters tall and is dressed in ill-fitting garments made from some sort of hide. He carries a large wooden club. This creature will provide a great training opportunity. Attack him as he enters. Try to creep out without him noticing you. Try to distract him by throwing something. Hello, my friends, and welcome back to The Warlock of Firetop Mountain. My name is Nos, and we left off right here. To your left, on the west face of the passage, there is a rough-cut wooden door. You listen at the door and can hear a rasping sound, which may be some sort of creature snoring. Ooh, press on northwards or open the door. I can't see shit. Can I move the camera? That'd be nice. We'll quietly open the door, hopefully. The door opens to reveal a small, smelly room. In the center of the room is a rickety wooden table on which stands a lit candle. Underneath the table is a small wooden box. Asleep on a straw mattress, groaning in the far corner of the room, is a green-skinned orc. He is a stocky creature with an ugly, warty face. He must be the guard for the night watch. Another sleeping orc. Maybe this place was not a great choice for my training. It's too easy. Try stealing the box without waking the orc. Wake up the orc and threaten him. Gently close the door and return to the corridor. Ah, uh, God, my guy thinks he's like Mr. Mega Badass. <laughs> uh, maybe I should try to just wake up the orc and threaten him. Um, uh, why, why not? Let's see how tough he really is. Storming over to the sleeping orc, you heave him off his filthy straw mattress and wake him up. Get up, fool! You growl in your most fearsome voice. To your surprise, the orc is up on his feet in an instant and very angry at being woken up. He draws his weapon and charges towards you with an almighty roar. Oh, great. Fight the orc. Oh, he looks, he looks kind of tough. Or how this is going to go. Oh, shite. I'm going to stay right here, man. Uh, how do I, how do I say, skip my turn? Stay in here, man. You, you come to me, buddy. You move forward. Fine. I'll move here. Oh, seriously? He can fucking hit me with the goddamn table? What the hell? That's bullshit. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. He's got like a long distance attack. Okay. Um You're going down, dude. Ah. Dodge your attack. Blam! Oh, nice. I hit him. Okay. Uh, let's do that again. Oh. Bastard moved. I think he's gonna come back. We'll attack again. Okay, then. <laughs> Bastard. Here we go. 
It's on. Victory. Nice. Well, I am kind of tough. To your surprise, the orc is up. Oh, read that. Okay. Fight the orc. Victory. You lost two stamina. You gained two souls. You have defeated the orc. With the box in hand, you leave the room and open the box in the passage. Inside, you find four gold pieces and a small mouse, which must have been the creature's pet. Well, I guess I got a pet. No. You release the mouse, which scurries off down the passageway. Continue onward. Follow the passage. Nicely done. You arrive at another door. You listen at it, but hear nothing. Um, try opening the door? The door opens to reveal a small room with a stone floor and dirty walls. There is a stale smell in the air. In the center of the room is a makeshift wooden table on which is standing a lit candle. Under the table is a small box. In the far corner of the room is a straw. A straw. Like a straw mat? Like a mattress? Let's open the box. Probably a bad idea, but strange runes adorn the box, which is rather light. As you pick it up, something rattles within. Oh, it's a good it's a fucking snake. I remember this. <laughs> God damn it. That is cool. I remember that picture from the book. You open the lid and small snakes pop out of the box, eager to bite your wrists. Achievement unlocked. Oh, peanut brittle. Discover an old orcish trick. Even though you are surprised, you manage to dodge them. Fight the snakes. Okay, here we go. Okie dokie. I'm gonna get rid of this table here. Ow! Fuckers. What the hell? They can strike me from there? That's not very fair. What, uh... What if I do that? Ha! How oh, you like me now, biatch? Shoved. Poisoned. Ooh, this is not good. Whack. Oh, you prick. Ah. Oh. God damn him. Gotcha this time. Blam. Okay, I need to heal. You have defeated the snakes. The box has fallen to the ground during your fight with the snakes, and out of it has fallen a key, which you take. Ah, Zagor's key found. Very nice. The stale, dirty room does not seem to have any more secrets to hide. You decide to continue to head deeper into the orc's barracks. Leave the empty room. Nice. The tunnel turns eastward and then splits. Um... Am I still poisoned? That's something I need to know. Oh shit, I'm okay. I'm only missing six hit points. Okay, so I can turn northward. That would be this way. Or I can continue eastward. And there's a door up ahead over here. I'm gonna go north. Oh, okay. This is north. Whatever. Further up the passage on the west wall, you see another wooden door. You listen at the door and hear the worst singing you have ever heard in your life. Investigate the hideous din or continue on it. Let's see what's in there. Goblins! 
The door opens to reveal a small room. The room is dirty and unkempt. A straw mattress lies in one corner, and in the far corner, a flight of steps leads out of the chamber. In the center of the room is a wooden table, upon which a candle burns, lighting the room with its flickering flame. A small box rests under the table. Seated around the table are two small orcs with warty skin dressed in leather armor. Oh my god, I fucking love this artwork! Oh, I remember this shit. Oh, it's cool to see it colored. This is how I remember seeing it, though. Right out of the book, man. They are drinking some sort of grog, and by the way, they stagger to their feet on your arrival. You assume they are very drunk. Um, knock their drinks off the table, speak to the orcs, slam the door quickly, and run on up the passage. Pull out your weapon and leap forwards with them. I think I've played through this so many times, I remember a lot of this. Like, you can easily beat them, usually, or you can, like, fool them into thinking you're their commander or something like that. Ah, I swear that might be a thing. Let's try it. Speak to the orcs. You say... Greetings, for even orcs deserve basic courtesy. The orcs stagger towards you, burbling incoherently. One swings his mace wildly, posing no threat to your safety. The other seems more friendly, perhaps offering you a swig of his drink. Or maybe just waving his mug around in the air. Either way, they both fall at your feet and pass out in a drunken stupor. Nice. Well, I didn't have to lift a finger, and they're both unconscious. Looking around, you decide to take the box from underneath the table. I... I do? <laughs> okay, then. Some letters that you cannot read are inscribed on a brass nameplate on its lid. Let's... let's open it. I'm curious. The box contains a small leather-bound book. You open the pages and try to read, but you cannot read the printed words. Well, shit. I'm illiterate. Leave by the flight of steps in the corner of the room, or through the door I entered by. Let's, uh, let's go up. Climbing the steps, you finally emerge at the far end of a large room, as untidily kept as any you have entered so far. A large chair behind a solid-looking table suggests that someone, or something, of rank uses this room. On one side of the room is a wooden bench. To your right in the far wall of the room is a large door that clearly leads onwards into the mountain. Oh yes, I remember this. The guy getting whipped. Yes. Opposite you is a man-sized creature with a warty face, standing over a smaller creature of similar race. With the whip in his hand, the orc chieftain has been beating his servant who is whimpering beneath him. Threaten the pair of orcs, attack them both, spring at the chieftain and hope his servant will aid you. Attempt to leave the chamber without engaging in combat. Oh... I'm gonna get that fucking chieftain bastard. As you spring at the orc, his servant rises to his feet, picks up a hefty wooden stick, and joins the melee. But to your disappointment, he attacks you. Ungrateful. Achievement unlocked. Thanks for nothing. Try to assist the orcish servant. Escape through the nearest door. Continue the fight. Ah, uh, let's bail! Fuckers. You arrive at a junction in the passage. The path continues eastward, and there are stairs leading to the south. Hmm. This looks promising. Ooh. You arrive at another junction in the passage. Turn northward. Ooh, what is this guy? The passageway leads into a square dungeon chamber. There are two doors in the eastern wall and two in the western wall. On the opposite side of the room, another passageway leads away north. 
The first door to the right is well used, and putting your ear to the keyhole, you listen and hear a man screaming for help from the inside. Before deciding what to do next, you listen at the other doors as well. From behind the second door to the right, you hear a thumping sound on the wood. Hello? Hello? Not funny. Open door. The first door to the left is made of solid metal. Listening at the door, you hear the sound of tortured screams coming from within. Putting your ear to the second door to the left, you hear nothing. The orcs have obviously imprisoned some unfortunate souls. It is my duty to help them. First door on the right, second door on the right, first door on the left, second door on the left. Um... Let's go to the first door on the right. You unbolt the door and swing it open. A nauseating stench hits your nostrils. Inside the room, the floor is covered with bones, rotting vegetation, and slime. A wild-haired old man, clothed in rags, rushes at you, screaming, God, I remember this. <laughs> this crazy fucker. This scrawny, crazy, wiry old bastard. Ha <laughs> ha ha! His beard is long and gray, and he is waving an old wooden chair leg. Is he simply insane as he appears, or has this been some kind of trap? Try to shout at him and calm him down. Threaten the old man into submission. Oh, gosh. I can't remember if either of those works. I know I've tried them both. Um... Shit. I'm gonna try and yell at him first. You shout, You're freed, old man! at the top of your voice. Instantly, his rantings cease. He stops dead in his tracks and sinks to the floor, weeping loudly. As he gradually composes himself, he thanks you many times. Many years ago, he was an adventurer like you in the search of the warlock's treasure. He was captured by the orcs and thrown into his solitary cell as a sort of pet for the creatures. I feel for this once great warrior. These orcs have no respect. You ask him for advice, but he says he knows little. He advises you to pay your respects to the boatman. He tells you that you must pull the right-hand lever on the wall ahead to open the iron gate at the end of the passage. He has also learned that the keys to the boathouse are guarded by a man and his dog. You shake hands and he leaves. Plus one to luck. Nice. Leave the filthy cell. Okay, um... I guess we're gonna try the second door on the right. Oh, boy. As you approach the door, the banging gets louder and the bolt starts to shake. Come on, Nurk, let me out. Waking up. Sliding back the rusty bolt and opening the door, you come face to face with a panicked looking goblin with a horrific creature closing in behind it. Slime beast, slime beast, run, squeaks the panicked goblin and lashes out at you. The toad-like slime beast joins in on the fray, opening its wide mouth. It is full of long spiked teeth. Fight the monsters. Shit. Okay, well, here we go. Um, we're gonna try the blade storm. Gotcha. Gotcha big time. Oh, what the hell hit me? Oh, he can attack to the sides, I see. Blammo! Come on, get him. Nice. Nice. 
twin charge strike? Wow, what is that? Something I can do diagonally, apparently. Oh, nice. Oh, that was badass. Ah, oh, you bastard. Gotcha. Nice. Oh, well, I guess I am pretty tough. You lost two stamina, you gained four souls. You have defeated the monsters. Initially, it looks as though there is nothing of value in the slime beast cell. However, upon a second glance, you notice a blue candle sitting in the muck. I will definitely be taking that. Although it is an odd place for a candle, you decide to take it with you. It may come in handy in one of the darker areas of the mountain. You put it in your backpack. I swear it does. There's a reason for taking that. All right, let's go to the tortured screams, I guess, after I heal. Um, provisions, how do I, uh, there we go. Bam. Okay. That healed me somewhat. The door is not locked and opens. The room in front of you seems to be a small torture chamber with various torture devices around the walls. In the center of the room, two small hunchbacked goblins are having their fiendish way with a dwarf who is tied to a hook in the ceiling by his wrists. The two hunchbacks are poking and cutting him viciously with their swords. Not nice. The dwarf lets out a final scream and falls silent. Eyes closed. His captors make disappointed noises and look around ang angrily at you as if it were your fault that the dwarf has collapsed. You must act quickly. Close the door quickly and avoid getting involved. Draw your weapon and fight the creatures. Give the dwarf a jab with your sword and put on an evil laugh for the tortures. Hell no. Let's just back the hell out of there. Um... Let's check this last door, just for posterity, I guess. The door is unlocked. Opening it, you find yourself at the threshold of the orc's weapon store. A torch hangs from one wall, lighting up a small armory room stocked with swords, shields, helmets, daggers, breastplates, and the like. I remember this picture, too. Cool. Oh, I dig it. A circular iron shield with a golden crescent lies at the far end of the room. However, as you do not use a shield, it is worthless to you. Shit. Let's search. You poke around the room. The weapons are blunted and worthless, and the helmets are battered and rusty. You decide to inspect the breastplates on the shelves to see if there's anything worthwhile there. You examine the breastplates and the shelves thoroughly, but there appears to be nothing of value. Well, if I used a shield, I guess, I guess I'm done here. Who are you? Exiting the dungeon, you hear the sound of water ahead of you, and you make out a grilled portcullis at the end of the passageway. Before you can reach the portcullis, you will have to cross a bridge that passes over a gully of gurgling brackish water. You suspect it may actually be a sewer, judging by the smell rising from it. Make your way towards the bridge. As you make your way toward the bridge, you pass some goblins which appear uglier than all the creatures you have encountered so far. The instant one of the goblins catches sight of you, it gives a screech of surprise and runs at you with its sword drawn. Kill! Kill! It shouts, drawing the attention of two other goblins. They all attack. Oh, buddy! Fight the goblin guards. Here we go. Okay, let's kick some ass here. Let's move here. Ow. And let's uh, blade storm this shit. Bam. Got two of you fuckers. Now I'm gonna twin charge strike you. Ooh, okay, or you. Move over here. Ow! Little pricks can attack diagonally. 
Oh. Damn it. Can I? Yes, I can. Blam! Oh, missed all of them. Fucking... Damn it, I forget which way that attack goes. Okay. Twin charge strike your punk ass. Okay. Gotcha. What are these souls for? You gotta be good for something, right? Ow. My move, huh? Can I use an item? Is that a fucking thing I can do? Oh, damn it, I can't do that yet. Can I attack him right there? Ah, he fucking moved. Ooh, this guy's pissing me off. Gotcha. I'm gonna get you, you son of a bitch. Ooh, this little prick. Um, he's probably gonna try to move there. Bam! Called your shit, biatch. Got him. Victory. Well, now I need some health. You have defeated the goblins. Good thing. You arrive at the end of the passage. An iron portcullis blocks your way, and no amount of charging is going to budge it. Well, let's. Use some provisions real quick. There we go. Yes. Oh, didn't he say the one on the right opens the portcullis? On the wall to your right are two levers, and it seems likely that these levers have something to do with raising the portcullis. Pull the right lever, pull the left lever. Okay. I can actually go back a ways, but not quite far enough. Pretty sure it said the right lever. Blah, blah, blah. Right lever. You hear a deep rumbling noise, and the ground begins to shudder. Slowly and noisily, the portcullis rises into the ceiling. It looks as though I have now left the orc barracks. I think I've probably killed around ten enemies. Maybe, yeah. Without hesitation, you walk towards the junction, listening carefully. However, you hear nothing down either corridor. Turn west or turn east? Ooh. Oh, my compass shows when I... That's cool. That's a nifty trick. Well... I think we're gonna go west, because I see a passage. Ooh, I see dark eyes, too. The passage begins to widen, and you soon arrive at another junction. Turn and head north. The passage looks as though it is entering into a large cavern. There appears to be no way through. Let's check. Ah. As you enter the cavern, you hear loud footsteps behind you, crunching heavily on the rocky floor. You crouch down beside the entrance in a small alcove. The steps get louder, and you see a great ogre enter the cavern. He stands over two meters tall and is dressed in ill-fitting garments made from some sort of hide. He carries a large wooden club. This creature will provide a great training opportunity. Attack him as he enters. Try to creep out without him noticing you. Try to distract him by throwing something. Oh, shite. I don't have the potion of invisibility, and if I did, that would be probably a good place to use it. Hmm. Straight to battle, or, uh, distract him and run. Let's try to throw something. 
You reach for a nearby stone. You throw it across the cavern where it lands with a loud clatter. The ogre looks toward the noise and goes over to investigate. Meanwhile, you creep out down the passage. Oh, and I go back out? Ah, fine. I wonder what's down there. This place is big. Seeing it visually represented like this gives you a, a much better sense of scale and scope of how big this firetop mountain really was. You cautiously continue down the rocky corridor and stop in front of an open portcullis entrance built into the stone. The sound of clinking chains and monstrous growls can be heard. The corridor continues on to the west. Oh, well, hi there. For some reason, I don't recall that picture. Suddenly, a terrified young acolyte runs into you. His white, rune-embroidered robes are torn and smudged with dirt. He looks at you with panic in his wide eyes. I yield! Education is not worth this much danger, no matter how great the reward. Taking a moment to catch his breath, the student begins to relax. My name is Ian the White, he says. I am a humble student seeking entry to the School of Sorcery. You learn that he gained entry, but was deemed unworthy by the Elemental Masters. Elemental Masters? These may prove difficult to get past. Threaten the terrified acolyte. Go north, go west. Hmm. I, uh... Elemental Masters, huh? We're gonna go look over here for a minute. You cautiously make your way down some steps. The air here seems different somehow. There is a strange smell in the air. Almost sweet. Continue onwards. You reach a junction where the path turns north through an archway held up by two pillars. A narrow passage also runs off to the west. Continue northwards or follow the passage west. Well, the game just did a nice little save transition right there. And I've been playing for about a half an hour, so I think this is a good spot to go ahead and stop for this episode. So, my guy is kind of tough. But I've really still got to watch my ass because I do take damage every battle just about. And I've got, what, one provision left? One or two? Let's take a look here one left and I don't know I don't remember there being very many places you can get more so I'm gonna have to really watch my ass trying to make it all the way to the warlock but man this brings back so many great memories I freaking love this game um, it's just like reading the book because it's literally like word for word right out of the book it's just got graphical representations of it all like like a board game or a video game. Man, it's really cool, and it brings back so many cool memories. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that thumbs up button if you liked this video. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know if you've read The Warlock of Firetop Mountain, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, so that you can join me next time for more Warlock of Firetop Mountain.